We're now going to take a look at the addition of amines to aldehydes and ketones. And we're going to start with primary amines, which means there's just one carbon attached to the nitrogen. Then we'll look at secondary amines in the next video. And this is going to be quite similar to addition of alcohols in that we're using acid. So that means we'll protonate the carbonyl and generate an activated carbonyl. And then the nitrogen, like the oxygen, has a lone pair which can add as a nucleophile. But because uh, amines are different functional groups than alcohols, we are going to end up with slightly different products. So let me first uh, just draw the product for you. So we're taking acetone as the ketone and methylamine, and we're using trace acid. So just a tiny bit of acid, enough to get the reaction going. And we're going to talk about why we only want a trace quantity of acid in just a bit. So the product of this reaction is going to have the carbonyl double bond replaced with a double bond to the nitrogen. And that nitrogen still has the CH3 attached. The byproduct is the two hydrogens that were on the nitrogen plus the oxygen. So just water. The product we get here is called an imine. So this is a new functional group where you have a doubly bonded nitrogen. Sometimes you'll also hear this referred to as a Schiff base. And it is a basic nitrogen because of the nitrogen's lone pair. So let's go through the reaction mechanism. This is an equilibrium process. The first step is going to be reaction of the carbonyl with acid. And at this point, you should know exactly what happens here. Use a lone pair on the carbonyl oxygen, draw a curved arrow to the proton, and then we'll draw the activated carbonyl. So that's where we have the protonated oxygen and a positive charge. That means we have an extra electrophilic carbonyl that is going to be reactive even with weak nucleophiles. Now the amine is going to get involved. And we have the lone pair on the nitrogen. That will add to the carbonyl carbon and then we'll push the pi bond up onto the oxygen giving oxygen its second lone pair. So at this point, the nitrogen still has the methyl group attached, and it has the two protons attached, meaning it will bear a positive charge. All right, now from here, there's a couple of ways to uh, continue. So you can do a two-step proton transfer where you use a base and take the proton off of the nitrogen, and then you protonate the oxygen. All right, with this, we can also take a shortcut. Okay, and the shortcut is just going to be, since the proton ends up going onto the oxygen anyway, we'll just use the lone pair on the oxygen, draw a curved arrow to one of the protons on the nitrogen, and then push that bond onto the nitrogen as a lone pair. So we get OH2 plus. And now the amine attached. Okay, now just be aware this is a shortcut. But I consider that a valid shortcut, so it's fine if you take that shortcut there. All right, now we have water as a leaving group and on the carbon. Next to that, we have the nitrogen, which has a lone pair. So what we're going to do is push this lone pair down, and that will assist in water departing. 
So here's where we lose H2O. We end up with the double bond to the nitrogen, but at this point it still has the methyl group and the proton. This is considered an aminium ion. Alright, so now just to get to the final product, a weak base can come in and take this proton off of the nitrogen, which will leave you with the amine. Make sure you take note that this is another equilibrium reaction. And similar to the acetal formation that we talked about earlier, because water is generated as a product of this reaction, the easiest way to drive this reaction to the right is to remove water as it's formed. I mentioned previously that it's really important to only use a trace amount of acid in this reaction. In most acid-catalyzed reactions, you only need a catalytic amount, but if you add more, it's not going to cause any problems. But when we're dealing with amines, a full equivalent of acid can be problematic. And that's because amines are basic. So what happens if we were to add a full equivalent of acid? we have an amine, and let's say we have one mole of it, and you react this with one mole of acid, like HCl, what's going to happen is this is going to undergo a quick acid-base reaction. and you're going to get one mole of the protonated amine. Now this isn't a terrible problem in terms of the acid being available because the protons on the nitrogen can act as an acid. And they can protonate that carbonyl. The bigger problem is all of your amine has been reacted away. There's no nucleophilic amine nitrogen around to react. So that's the issue.